Okay, so The Iron Claw is a movie that seems to be getting overlooked at the awards, but honestly, it's one of my favourite films from last year. The movie tells the story of a wrestling dynasty and what's arguably one of the industry's most iconic families. It tackles the highs and lows of being in the spotlight, as well as the strain that it can have on your family. The Von Erichs deal with tragedy after tragedy, and the movie centres heavily around the theme of loss. Whether it's the family members who pass away throughout, or the achievements and accolades they miss out on, it's rare that we see them actually get victories. However, in the end, they do in many ways, which makes the ending very powerful to watch. I don't want to see any tears. Which I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to manage that, but throughout this video, I want to talk about the film. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, I'm your host Paul, thank you for clicking this. Now let's dive into the Iron Claw. Now the movie's main driving force is Fritz von Erich, who we join in his early wrestling days. Fritz took on an evil German persona and carved out a name for himself in the developing scene. In real life Fritz, or rather Jack Atkinson, he was someone who was driven by pride. After missing out on what he believed he was due, he pushed his sons towards becoming wrestlers themselves. Now Fritz is a very complicated character, and though he's painted out as the bad guy, I, I think it's more complex than that. Uh, yes, he was controlling. And 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 yes, you know, he 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 motivated his 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 sons, you know, you know, to try, you know, to be to become to become champions. And maybe he did push too hard sometimes. But you know, um I'd rather I'd rather have a father like that than a father who didn't care. To some extent, I do kind of agree, but it's clear he went too far and caused issues with his family. These were people who were struggling with loss, and early on their son Jack Jr. was electrocuted. Sadly, this caused the child's death, and it started up a long string of tragedies. Throughout the film, they mention that there's a curse, which is thought to be due to Adkiss and changing their name. The Von Erichs on his mother's side had suffered constant tragedy, and it's that that some start to believe is carried over to his sons. You can see why too, and though I don't believe in curses, it's hard to deny a lot of bad things happened. David died in Japan during 1984 after an issue with his intestines, and it meant not only did they lose their son, but the NWA World Heavyweight title belt wasn't brought back to the family. We also have a brother who's not present in the movie, which the director originally planned to have appear. That is Chris Von Elric, who too wanted to be a wrestler. However, he suffered from brittle bones and asthma, and took his own life at the age of 21. Chris was thought to be hurt by his lack of success and said to have felt like a failure in the eyes of his father. In the film, you can kind of see why too, as Fritz is constantly pushing them to better the other brothers. Even when it comes down to personal issues, he tells them to confide in themselves. It's clear he wants the glory that comes from being a father, but he's not actually there to put in the work himself. Now Chris was cut because they felt the constant deaths were too repetitive, and this has garnered some controversy amongst fans. People feel like his life has been omitted, however, I think it would add even more tragedy to a film that's already very tragic. I can't even imagine what this would be like in real life, like to lose one child would be absolutely devastating, but for all these to go, you just can't comprehend how painful that would be. Now from this point, Mike was pushed towards wrestling, even though he just wanted to be a cameraman. After busting up his shoulder battling in the ring, he then suffered toxic shock syndrome while in shoulder surgery. Unable to wrestle, he overdosed on tranquilizers, which then had a knock-on effect in Kerry. Kerry was then in a motorcycle accident, which led to the amputation of his right foot. This was kept completely secret from the public, with Kerry even wrestling while wearing a prosthetic. According to many, he even showered with his boots on, and this gave the impression that nothing was wrong. However, inside, he was clearly hurting, and he shot himself in the chest at his parents' ranch. Now this kind of takes us into one of the final scenes, in which we see Kerry alive and well in the afterlife. His foot is returned and he finds peace with his brothers, even getting to meet little Jack Jr. This was the scene that completely broke me down, and it was such a beautiful way to portray the afterlife. The brothers all hug, and it shows what really matters, and that in the end, all we have is family. I think it's important that the words are stripped away, and in the end, they, they just hug it out. There's not the need for long overblown conversations, there's just this feeling of pure bliss and peace. Now, not to Vin Diesel it, but this idea of family is something that carries across into the end. Here we catch Kevin watching his sons playing football, and he breaks down because he realises he's no longer a brother. However, his children come over and hug him too, and they then tell him that they'll be his brother. 
The three then hug in a similar way to how the brothers have hugged throughout the film, and it really brings everything full circle. At the core of it, this shows that family is the most important thing, and it hints the real loss that Fritz has now faced. In focusing on belts, titles and accolades, he's ignored the thing that should really mean the most. Even just telling Kevin to work it out with his brother shows that he doesn't really want to deal with the boy's emotions. He's someone who says they shouldn't cry at funerals, and this in itself shows a weakness within him. He's unable to deal with the emotions, as that's something that would be too painful. I feel like the term toxic masculinity, it's often overused, and in many cases, it's just become a buzzword. Our director Sean Durkin described it as that, and honestly, I think it's the perfect term for the situation. Thus, he simply shuts up and shuts it down, which is something that Kevin almost does too. However, his sons say it's okay to cry, and we see him having a bittersweet moment. <sighs> Durkin said he wanted this to feel like a cathartic release in which the bottled up emotions were finally coming forth. Sat there with tears running down his face, it's an incredible moment which we as an audience also feel too. Though he's lost his brothers, he's still got his family and he gets up and goes and plays football with them. It's an incredible way to show the cycle is breaking, which is something that we also see mirrored in Fritz. He comes home to see his wife Doris, who's broken the cycle of her usual routine. What's for dinner? I didn't make anything. I'm not hungry. I think this is important for a number of reasons, as she's also experienced as much loss as he has. However, she's someone who had to keep quiet too, but this is her finally expressing herself. Sat there painting, we see a softer side of Fritz as he sits down and just allows it to happen. At this point, we then get the message hammered home that family is one of the most important things. The family were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, but beyond that, the real achievement they linger on is the final shot. Turns out Kevin and his wife Pam bought a ranch where they'll now all live together. Beyond that, the brothers are also united in heaven, which the director explained the true meaning of. Durkin broke it down with variety and explained the scene and what it truly meant. He said, It was a hard sell. It's a scene that got commented on the most times in the writing process and questioned the most. The scene should not work right. You've got a pretty grounded world, an emotionally honest look at family, but I wanted to visually portray Carrie's final imagining of where he was going when he died. What it felt he was escaping. I wanted something heightened, a bit more otherworldly. I wanted to visualise the purest sense of their connection. It's a release. The only direction I gave the guys was about tenderness with which they touch each other. I wanted them touching each other's faces, almost sensual. I wanted a mythical sense of crossing the river and leaving the clan just to have that sort of love in its purest form. I feel like it's something I'll remember forever, and it's the most impactful scene I've seen in a long time. I can imagine that when people talk about the afterlife from now with me, that this is something that will at least cross my mind. Loss is something that we all have to deal with, and unfortunately death's a part of life. However, there's still good things in life as well, and I feel like the film shows the good while dealing with the bad. It definitely feels like a more positive note to end on in what could be nothing but depression. It reminds us in life of what really matters and it's a powerful way to close out the film. The Von Erichs could have easily been bothered about the belt but what they saw in the end was them amongst their family. That's something that I'll feel for a long time and I hope you've enjoyed us going back through the film. Please drop a like on the video and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society then please click the join button. We get early access to videos every week and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch, we've also got our t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our Thieves Time 1, House of Dragon, House of Dragon stuff, Marvel tees and more. We drop new designs on there all the time too, so definitely keep an eye out. Now if you want some else to watch, we've got a video on screen right now talking about why Madame Web sucked. Bit, bit more negative than this one, we're trying to be positive but that was a negative one but Hope you enjoy it, and without the way, thank you for sitting through the video. I've been your host, Paul. I'll see you next time. You take care. Peace.